Hey guys, today we're going to be discussing three mistakes that people make that end up costing them the game. These mistakes are classics and they're simple, but they are committed at every single skill level. So let's get right into it. Mistake number one is idle town centers. In AoE4, you want to be having the best villager graph possible. Whereas this does sound very simple, it is something that really will cost you games in the long run. The reason for this is because a town center is a very expensive investment, and thus, as a expensive production building, you want to keep them going as much as possible. If you miss production cycles on your archers or your knights or what have you, it's not going to be as severe as having an idle town center. One of the biggest bottlenecks that you face as a player is expanding your economy as fast as possible. Make sure that you have two or three villagers queued up in every single town center and check this on an ongoing basis, say every 20 seconds. You want to create an itch for yourself, an itch that needs to be scratched every 20 seconds, where am I producing villagers? Is this town center idle? Yes or no. Once you get into this habit, your villager production will be much better. Two other things to mention on this topic is that you shouldn't be staying on a single town center for too long, even if you open up with aggression. You realistically want to be on a second town center, I would say before 10 minutes into the game. Most of the time you will not be able to end games with aggression or rushes and you need to have a strong follow up and that's where that second town center comes in and the third and the fourth. And this is also why having constant villager production is just so critical. Because your goal is to win games by having more units than your opponent, by having more upgrades than your opponent, by having more than your opponent. And one of the ways to do that is to expand your own economy. Finally, don't be afraid to overboom. You can go up to like 130 villagers uh, between your villagers and your fishing boats in order to get a very, very strong economy, max out your population, and start building a bank. This particular point carries over from Age of Empires 2, uh, where Hera, for example, a very high level player from that game, was explaining that it is better to have banked up resources in a higher economy and to then delete villagers when you need the military population. So make your villagers constantly, and make as many of them as you can, as fast as you can. Hey, if you've seen some of the other videos on my channel, this might be an appropriate time for a subscription they are free. Point number two is discussing siege in AoE 4. A lot of the times when we are attacking our opponent we are looking to do game ending damage because we have acquired a military advantage. Maybe you just boomed really well and you have a ton of units or maybe you have just beat the enemy army in a military engagement and at that point you have more units than your opponent. The question becomes how do you push that military advantage? More often than not, enemy infrastructure such as town centers, castles, and outposts make it very difficult for your units to kill your opponent. At this point, you need a very strong siege game. The role of your standing army at this point is to be protecting your siege assets. Because what we are looking to do is attack the infrastructure of your opponent with siege. This sounds simple on paper, but there's actually a few technical aspects to it. You actually want to have a certain amount of spring bolts. The reason for this is that this is a long-ranged anti-artillery unit. You may be pushing into the enemy base with mangonels or trebuchets or that sort of thing. However, the thing is a springald with good micro should actually be able to push away that siege push. And springalds, if they're well protected by enemy units or by enemy town centers and or castles, it becomes a very difficult situation to break into. So for that reason, you actually want to obtain a springald advantage yourself. You want to make your own so as to zone away the enemy springalds and allow your own siege to do their job which is to destroy enemy buildings. My point is if you attack into an enemy base with only mangonels you will be shut down by an enemy with good micro and their own springalds. If the enemy is effective at protecting their own springalds then you really can't do anything. So for this reason you need a balanced army. You need some standing units to protect your units from enemy units. You need some anti-building siege. Mangonels are great by the way because they're effective against both buildings and units. And then the third part of this core pushing army if you will is the springald itself. 
learning to micro and manage spring golds effectively will really take your siege pushes to the next level but this is something you should really sit down and practice by the way there are obviously more than just three mistakes that you can make in aoe4 let me know in the comment section some classic mistakes that could have made their appearance in this video you see, I'm only speaking from my own experience right now, but I'm highly interested in the perspective of others, and that includes you, the viewer. Moving on to point number three, this is another mistake that is made at every skill level. The idea is that in the early game especially, you are investing into too many different areas at the same time. Allow me to explain. Right after you've clicked up to the feudal age is when you are deciding what direction to take the game. This could be in the form of a rush, this could be in the form of a fast expansion, or maybe a fast castle. I think a mistake that is made by uh, a lot of people is that they try to do two or three of those things at once and unfortunately your economy at that point in time can only realistically support one of them. You have to be willing to follow the path that you have chosen and completely commit to it. Should you go for aggression, do not half-ass it. Really turn up the heat at your opponent's base and don't really think about going to the next stage or anything else of the sort until you have done damage. In a similar vein, should you opt for a second town center upon aging up, you will be giving up a military advantage at that point in the game. So you will not have easy map control, you will be at the mercy of your opponent's units. You at that point need to be comfortable with playing with less units and utilizing your own town centers for defensive purposes. You don't want to be making a second town center and rushing your opponent at the same time, it's just not going to work. You want to be making a second town center and then just a few units to either harass your opponent and keep them on their side of the map or to defend your second town center. And after that, you need to be cognizant of what your second town center is giving you, which in this case is more villagers. That means that you can actually sacrifice a couple of villagers if needed in order to defeat, you know, siege rams or if you need to sacrifice them in order to get the actual TC up, that sort of thing. The idea is that you know that you will be producing two villagers at a time instead of one villager at a time and you need to give time for that investment to pay off. Knowing when to transition away from your step one plan is all about being good at the game. In the case of a TC fast expand, you want to be pumping out villagers, and eventually you want to utilize the villagers that you have created in order to get a large mass of units. This means that we need to go into a game with a plan. Step one, second town center. Step two, get the villagers going. Step three, make a lot of units, make sure they're upgraded, and then go attack with a superior mass. The idea is to commit to a certain strategy one step at a time. Going into the game with a clear idea of what you want to do and or what you want to prevent your opponent from doing goes a very long way because if you're playing with direction in your game, you will be more effective at what you are doing. What you want to avoid is going into a game and trying to do a little bit of everything and hoping that it actually pays off. Yes, you want a lot of villagers. Yes, you want to attack your opponent. Yes, you want to tech and age up and get upgrades. But you have to choose when to do those steps and you have to do them one at a time, at least in the early game. I hope that this discussion gave you a few ideas to apply into your own games.